is what is given on the formula sheet. We're now going to do, for those of you that are listening in at home, I don't know if anyone does, um, when you go to the exam booklet and you get that formula sheet that's in there, right? the only thing that is given for uh, the car is this one here, fuel economy is the fuel used in liters. Don't write this down because it's already on the sheet. Fuel used in liters divided by the distance times by 100. And you're going to get some number, right, that's going to be like so-and-so liters per 100 kilometers. And it tells you how much gas you use for 100 kilometers. And then there's a variety of tax situations as well. They give you, and I gave you guys this, they say like taxes on vehicle purchases. So they say PST and GST, PST on buying new, GST on buying new. They tell you when to apply that certain tax. Okay, so that's on the sheet as well. What did we do yesterday? We went through the cheat sheet of the house. Home fund. Yeah, a new little square. Yep. We're doing exactly the same thing for vehicle. We're going to keep doing this every day. Every day? Yeah, every day. Oh, yeah, five days. Oh, yeah. Right, it's next Wednesday. What time? Nine. Where? Five days. Well, five school days. Oh. Right, 9 a.m. next Wednesday. Where, right? Cafeteria. Cafeteria. In your room. Cafeteria. Oh, well, That's, I'm not going to be in the cafeteria. It's going to be in the cafeteria. Well, I'm not. Oh, yeah, you're not, yeah. Okay, so um, some other things. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go through. We have a copy this is where you start copying. Oh, right. Should we start from the? Well, the first thing I've got is buying a vehicle, and I've got base price, sticker price. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing I've got here is your sticker price is the base price plus options, right? So the base price is basically like tires and a steering wheel. Maybe windows. Right? That's how they get you now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, what do you do with all the options? Things like, you know, cruise control and like sunroof and uh, Bluetooth stereo. And, right? You add them on, right? Add them on. Okay, so that was the first thing, right? Then there's a bunch, then the next page, if you flip that page, if you're following along in the little booklet, there's a couple examples there. And if you want, like if you want to include examples on your cheat sheet, you go right ahead if you think you need. But this one's pretty easy, right? It's just adding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, then the next part is taxes and stuff. Okay? So they, they talk about all the stuff there, right? So the tax, I'm just going to say, see the formula sheet. Or you don't even need to write that down because it's all on that sheet, right? It's all on the given formula sheet. All the when do you apply, when do you put this tax and when do you put that tax. And I would recommend you read through that again to sort of just refresh your memory about the examples and stuff, right? Okay, then the next thing is trade in. Let's hope it's the next thing on mine. Yes, it is. The trade-in, you have to remember, this is actually quite important. You want to subtract the price before uh, tax is calculated. Subtract from the price before tax. Right? Always subtract your trade-in value. Before taxes. Now, is the dealer going to give you the best trade in possible? No, no. No. They're in the business of making money, right? Are you likely going to make more money if you sell it privately? Yes. 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 You are. Is it more hassle? Yeah. Yes. So if you're willing for the hassle, go for it. I sold a car once to a guy in Winnipeg. He bought it, thousand bucks sight unseen. I just met him in a parking lot. He gave me a thousand dollars cash. I tossed him the keys and said, see you later. Oh, wow. I couldn't believe it. And, weird weird story, he lived in the house that I lived in when I was in Winnipeg, in the university. He said, I'll meet you at this house. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. I know that address. And I get there, I'm like, oh, I know this place. That was for the free. Okay, 
you have to use, now we're going to pay for the car, right? How do you pay for the car? Just like paying for um, a house, there's the whole down payment thing, right? You subtract the down payment, but you're going to use the table. We gave you a table to calculate the monthly payment. Do you remember that table? I don't know. I couldn't find... If you have to find the monthly payment on a car, they're going to give you this table. Probably right in the question would be my guess. Okay? And it works very similar to um, the house one, right? So you find the percent, you find the number of months, right? And you multiply that number by that number, right? But that number is per thousand. So you have to divide by a thousand and then multiply by the value of the table. Exactly like the house one, right? So maybe I'll actually put this in here. I'm going to squeeze this in here. Oh, darn. Let's get this out of here. Okay, so you take the price, divide by 1,000 times the table value, right? Make sure you divide by a thousand. Does that make sense to everyone? I don't want to go on. Let's make sense to everyone. Okay, so here's the question that I'm talking about. Okay, so watch closely because we haven't done any of these in class. Okay, right? But yeah. this was on January's exam. So I would expect a similar one. January? This yes, January's exam. Glenn wants to borrow $23,000 to purchase a car, a bank offers her an interest rate of 5.25% over five years. Calculate the amount of interest Gwen would pay on her first month's payment. Okay, so I don't know if you've ever seen ones like this, but the formula that you would use is I is equal to P times R times T. Have you ever seen that right? Yeah. Well, I would suggest you guys do this. Yeah, probably you want it on your cheat sheet in case what it shows up. Like, kind of this is a vehicle interest question. Okay, the, the question is calculate the amount of interest Gwen would pay on her first month's payment. How much does she owe in interest after the first month? Blaine, put the phone away and listen and learn. Okay, so the P stands for principal. How much is the principal? It's 23000 Yes. Okay, it's 23000 Yeah, I'll make it a bit bigger here for you. Okay, the interest rate is 5.25%, but you have to change that to a decimal. 0. 0. Uh, what was it? 5.25? So it would be 0. 0.0525, right? Now times T. T stands for the? Time. Oh. Time. So five years. No. Three years Be so. Because it's over five years, but it's only one month. So the T is always measured in years. So one month is what percent of a year? Uh, one. Bingo. Yeah. So it's times by one divided by 12. Multiply by one twelve. By This is one month. That's what that says. I'm going to make my pen small. You're multiplying by 112 because it's one month. Okay? And I know, I know I haven't shown you guys ones like this, so this concerns me. 23,000 times 0 0.0525. Well, you should have showed that. I'm doing it now. Times 1 divided by 12. So it's $100.63. That would be the amount of interest. That's just how much they ha she has to pay to borrow the twenty-three thousand. If she only paid a hundred dollars and sixty-three cents, how much would she still owe at the end of the month? Twenty-three thousand. Yeah. Like she could pay the hundred dollars and sixty-three cents every month forever and still owe twenty-three thousand dollars. She's gonna have to pay more than that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Josh, I would make sure you have that on your cheat sheet. Yeah. Good. Okay, part B says, explain how Gwen can reduce the total interest paid over the life of this loan if she's unable to make a larger down payment. 
If she can't make a larger down payment, what are ways she can reduce the total interest paid? Well, she could pay more per month. Yeah, yeah, increase her monthly payment. She could request a lower rate. I don't know if you need to write these down. She could also buy a cheaper car. I don't know if that's an acceptable answer or not. Maybe she has to negotiate harder on the, on yeah. the price of the car. Right? Yeah. Or she could also, she could, if she has a trade in, she yeah. could sell it privately and make more money. Right? I would accept any of those answers. Lisa? Yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks, Alice. Mrs. Pazlowski has suggested that we add in, what's going on here? We add in a statement here that you uh, add on taxes and then subtract down payment. That's right. The down payment is just a total payment after the total cost, right? Yeah. Excellent point. <coughs> okay. Okay, so let's go back to talk about depreciation. Depreciation is the, the uh, car losing value, right? Car losing value. That's what it is. Right? Because you're going to give the car back to the dealership, right? You're going to give the car back to the dealership, and is the car worth less? Yeah. It is, right? So you're paying them for the value of the car losing its value, right? And put the phone away. Listen. Listen and learn. Review. Okay. So you're making, depreci you're making lease payments very much the same, like you would make... Um, uh, regular payments to buy, right? Often, though, the lease is what? The lease, is, the lease payments are often less, right? Almost always. Often less than buying. Right? But what's the disadvantage? What's that? Well... What's the distance, like at the end of the, the lease, the end of the three years, what happens to the car? It's not yours anymore. It goes back to Dean Cooley's and you got nothing, right? Yeah. You've paid to rent the car, really, right? So it's often less than buying, but you must return it. Okay? And then you can lease another one or you can buy another one. Sometimes you can buy that car from the person that you've leased it from. From what I read, that's the worst way to buy a car, yeah. is to lease and then buy it. You're always going to pay more. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now you should know about residual value as well. You should definitely know about advantages and disadvantages, but residual value. You guys remember what that means? Lane, do you remember what residual value means? That is the value at the end of the lease, right? So as an example, make it a $40,000 car. $40,000 car has a residual value of 75% at the end of two years. Calculate the residual value. How do you do that? Residual value. So you would take that $40,000 right, and multiply by 0.75. 
Okay, in this case, that would be um, 30,000. That's what the car is worth at the end. If you were to buy it, that's what you would owe. And be aware that the dealer will always make money off. That's your job. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, no, 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 no. I kind of need some water. And okay, go get some water ready before you die of thirst. That security deposits are often returned, right? You often get your security deposit back. So if, Josh, are you listening? So if they ask for the total costs, you don't have to include the security deposit. You pay the $400, just like Josh's football equipment, ironically, or apropos, I guess. You pay the $400 security deposit, but then you get it back. So it doesn't factor into the total cost. Okay? Okay, then we talked about residual value. We did that already, right? Okay, then there we talked about owning a vehicle. I'm going to go to another page because I'm running out of space here. Okay, so owning a vehicle, you will have to do that fuel economy stuff. You will have to know how to do the fuel economy. All right, remember it's the formula? Well, fuel economy. Fuel economy of your car, your, your Bugatti. Bugatti. I'm going to buy an electric Bugatti. It's going to run on D cell batteries. I'm going to buy it. Walmart. Hey? You're going to say ooh. I'm going to say ooh. Oh. Hey, I saw, I saw online they've got electric school buses now. They do. Okay. Okay, so you got to be able to do that fuel economy stuff, right? How do you do that again? You take the liters used. Oh, this is on the formula sheet, right? But I'll just remind you. Okay. Remember, it's the it's the liters used divided by the distance, right? Times a hundred. Right. And we've already got this formula on our sheet, right? Okay. So there's some examples that, like, I would suggest leave a space. You guys put in examples. If you think that's worthwhile. I mean, if the phone is down, you can make a If what? The, the fuel. Okay. Okay, then we talked about insurance, right? Car insurance. I guess I should call it car insurance. Car insurance, right? So there's the different types of insurance, right? There's all purpose, which is what most people have for school or work. There's what they call pleasure, which is for retired people. Or non working people, maybe I shouldn't say retired. For non-work right like if you've got a 67 mustang convertible that you only drive to clear lake for ice cream you can have pleasure insurance i never drive it to work yeah i know someone that built a 68 mustang oh yeah you get me a deal it's a mach one oh yeah i know those yeah not a convertible then yeah it's a fastback i don't think it's a 68 maybe yeah yeah i know what you mean yeah. Anyways, let's talk about this. Okay. So, in fact, like what I do, the way my birthday is, I just got my insurance in the mail. It's due June, uh, July the 13th, I think. So I often go in on July 1st, pay my insurance, and I move my car to pleasure because guess what? I'm not going to work in the summertime, and I save a few bucks. Yeah. Wait. Oh wait. What? No, I. I see your Facebook. Oh, I got fixed. Yeah, thanks. I got fixed. I got fixed yeah. <laughs> but then I have to remember to go back to all purpose in September, or ride my bike. Okay. 
Uh, then there's like farm insurance, there's farm all purpose, there's a variety of different ones as well. But those are the two main ones, right? You might want to include factors that affect your premium. What kind of factors are there that affect your, what is a premium, an insurance premium? What does that even mean? What's a premium? It's the cost, how much you pay, right? So it might be your experience. Whoops, I don't need BL. <laughs> that might be an experience. Your record. I knew a guy once. You got, you know, you have like your credits on your um, driver's license, right? And like for every credit, you earn like is it two percent off or something? Like that? <laughs> something like that. Yeah. I knew a guy. I used to work in an insurance office. He came in. You know how many demerits he had? Oh, how much? What's the maximum? No. Thirteen. Maximum I think is thirty. Oh, yeah. He had thirty. Ooh. His insurance was like ten thousand dollars or something. Or other. It was like, insane. So if he has thirty demerits, his license should be suspended. He was like a th he was one more speeding ticket away from losing his license. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Easy, easy, easy. easy. Right. Uh, location. If you drive in Dauphin, you pay less than if you drive in Winnipeg. The type of car. If you're driving a Bugatti, you're going to pay more insurance than if you're driving a Civic. Honda Civic, a 1984 Civic. Oh, that's a, that's a good I know, yeah, yeah. How come you pay more for a Bugatti? More expensive. More expensive. If you wreck it, it costs more to replace. Because uh, Bugatti is like 1.5 mil. Right. Okay? All of those things are um, possible. I'd rather go to Nissan GT on the Okay. Vehicle. There might be There might be a maintenance question like Elvis goes in with his Bugatti for an oil change and they tell him that he needs new spark plugs and new wiper blades and the brakes need work, right? And all these things. So that's what they'd like to do. Right? And they might say like, you know, you have to add up all the costs and add tax, right? Add up the costs. Thank you. Add up costs and add tax, right? That kind of stuff. Do you think when you go break your car in the garage that they um do something else up on purpose? No, I don't think they do. But they certainly go looking for things. But I mean, to be fair, they want to make sure you're like they found when well, last time my vehicle was in, they said, you know what, your tires are really bad shape. And I went and had a look, and they were. And I definitely need a wheel wind. Someone hit too many potholes in my vehicle. So I gotta get that looked at. Real soon. Okay, now there's also um, I'm just gonna go another page here. There's also oops. Oh, you weren't done? Okay. Okay, there's also on the last page there is uh, comparing financing, right? It's the advantages of leasing and buying. I'm just going to show it here. Let me see if I can find it. You should probably jot a few of these down, right? Make it bigger. Okay, so some advantages to leasing. Lower monthly payments. Good when you want to get a new car every two to three years because you're like a retired teacher like my dad. And I keep saying, Dad, you should be leasing. There is the option to buy the car at the end of the lease. It's convenient. There's no resale. There's no haggling. You just walk in, toss in the keys, start over. <coughs> oh, sorry, that, that's a disadvantage, right? That there's no resale or trade at all your car. You don't own it. There are penalties if you drive over your limit. If you drive to California and go see Mickey Mouse, you might pay extra. Okay? Buying. You own the car. So if you're leasing this advantage, yeah. you're just paying for the miles, right? You're basically just paying for the miles, yeah. So advantages to buying, you own the car, right? If you want to, you know, put on the fancy rims or the fuzzy dice on the rear view mirror, I guess you could do that. That's too, that's too bad, man. You can put in your own stereo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you think you need to write all those down? Oh, no. 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 You've got a couple. It's going to say, if they give a question like that, it's going to say, give one advantage and one disadvantage is what it's going to say. 
As long as you get one or two, you're good. Well, if you want, again, this is all your own choices, right? So they might ask you a question, what are some benefits to a new car compared to a used car? Right? If it's new, it's a brand new car. It's cool. It's got that cool, nice new car smell, right? It's yours. Is this the last one? This is the last one. You got a warranty. You guys know what warranty is? Yeah. So if you break it. Well, no, not if you break it, but if something goes wrong. Right? Like, like, or you burn it, it, or you burn it, or so no problem. No, it'd be more like if you know the muffler falls off. Well, what if there's an uh, engine failure? Yes, yeah, then it would be covered. Then, but if you lit a match to it, no. The more reliable, right? Generally, they cost a whole lot more new cars, right? Like I've only ever bought a new car once in my life. Advantages to used cars, they're cheaper, they depreciate less, right? You may have to get a loan to the bank. Usually higher interest rates at the bank, you may not have warranty, maybe a lemon, might not be very good. That kind of stuff. I am all done. All done. Okay. So I didn't have, let me just see, just 